Let's visit the ExoKitty film locations. So here's the game plan. ExoKitty has filmed in South Korea from March to June of 2022, and they hit a couple of places throughout the series. We are going to be visiting the Korean Independent School of Seoul, also known as KISS, the KISS Library, Incheon International Airport, the KISS Welcome Party, Seoul Hike, and Seoul Central Market. Hello, I'm Logan, and I live in South Korea. But today, I'm going to be your tour guide into the world of ExoKitty. So let's go. Our first stop of the tour is KISS, or the Korean Independent School of Seoul. This is a real school in Korea, but it isn't an international school, and it isn't actually in Seoul. Its actual name is Kwan University of Art and Design, and it's located in Wewang. Seeing this place in real life was kind of surreal for me, I don't know why. Like, when I saw it, I felt like I was, like, actually in the series. I never felt more main character energy in my life. I think what helped, too, was that this university, unlike Korea's most prestigious universities, wasn't very popular when it came to tourists. So when I visited the campus, it was pretty much just me and the actual staff and students that attended the university, and I also think that the people that saw me walking around just assumed that I was a student so nobody really cared. This campus definitely was not super huge compared to other universities that I visited in Korea, but it was a very good cozy size and it was very beautiful. Like it was no question why they chose to film here. From the thing that I saw, there were two main school buildings, a cafeteria building with the CU which is a popular convenience store chain here, a basketball court, and they had facility buildings like the information office and they also had a university church. I was planning on going balls to the wall and going inside a building but I was scared they were gonna like ask me for ID and I would get busted. I love the whole vibe that the university had, not just from the architecture but also from the students. When I visited, there were a lot of students walking around campus and taking pictures, which I assume was for the photography class, and all of them seemed so cool. Like you know those videos of people going to FIT in New York and seeing all of the different outfits? It was kind of a similar vibe to that, but I think a good amount of people in Korea already have like a decent sense of fashion. So instead of clothes, what stood out to me that these students had that typical Koreans don't is their hairstyles. I saw a lot of fun, trendy hairstyles and hair colors while I walked around campus. Like so many guys with mullets and so many people with like cute like two-toned hair. I loved it. All right, so now I wanted to talk about some of the characters of the show. This will be filled with spoilers, so just a warning. So first we're gonna talk about Kitty. Kitty, our designated Asian in every Jenny Han piece of film pretty much ever. Her situation by the end of the series is so messy. They literally just like piled like everything in the kitchen sink on Kitty. They really like wanted her to like solve it in season two and you you can feel that, but I'm so excited to see how it plays out. Kitty is like literally so easy. Yuri and Day literally was putting her through like hell and back and literally like the moment that they broke up and Day was like, okay, I'm ready for a relationship. I'm ready to be with you now. Kitty literally went running back to Day and literally kissed him right then and there. I'm so sick of this. You're obviously still in love with Kitty. You're free now. This is real and it's really happening. Come on, girl, you need to put some boundaries on yourself or he's gonna walk all over you in a relationship. Throughout the later parts of the series, I was like kind of obsessed with like Yuri and Kitty scene. If I'm being completely honest, when I first saw the like kind of like bi storyline like brewing up, I thought it was gonna be an afterthought. I wasn't really expecting the series to be like very queer and I love that it is very queer, but I wasn't expecting it. So I thought it was just gonna be like, oh yeah, Kitty has a little crush and then get, just get like sweep under the rug. But no, they really like fully fleshed out like Kitty's crush on and Yuri and I really like that. It was really fun to see Kitty having this gay panic and like oh my god what's happening to me I don't know what I'm doing like whenever she's around Yuri and I thought it was really cute. I love it. I am pretty much like rooting for the gays like almost in every series like I am biased like that but if I'm being completely honest I don't think that Kitty and Yuri are gonna be endgame just simply because I think that Yuri and Juliana genuinely like the actors that are playing those characters they have like amazing chemistry on screen and I don't see Kitty breaking Breaking that, that chemistry is way too strong to break, for sure. Now that we're officially enrolled at KISS, we got to go to the KISS Welcome Party. The KISS Welcome Party was filmed in Dongdae Moon Design Plaza, one of Seoul's most famous landmarks. I would be lying if I said I have never been here before, like it's literally one of those places everybody goes to when they visit Korea, but this time checking the plaza, I definitely tried to see every corner of it and for sure saw a ton that I've never seen before. Like I genuinely did not know that there was so much of the plaza that I haven't seen yet. It was such a huge space and so many tourists walking around. It was a very fun place to be at. I spent around a full hour or two just exploring the whole thing. Obviously 
obviously the architecture was gorgeous and when you go inside there's a ton of retail stores and restaurants. I kept walking and I found this like little hangout space with a bunch of seating areas and a bunch of people like just hanging out. It was so quiet and calming in there. I wanted to sit down but if I did I wouldn't want to get back up again. So I walked more and I found some of these like little art rooms then kept walking until I finally reached the exhibition halls where they filmed Exo Kitty. For the most part this area of the plaza is really just like a white empty endless hallway or that's what it seemed like anyways but I kept going until I found a room where the kiss welcome party was held at. It was filmed at exhibition hall 2. I obviously couldn't go in the room because it was not open but this is how the room looks like without flashing lights and a bunch of high schoolers. So let's talk about Day. Day fucked up my man so hard at the end. I will never forgive Jenny Han for the sins that she has committed. Not only did he lose a girl he also lost his scholarship. Like what the fuck is that? I'm so mad about it. But yeah Day best boy hands down the best character. I love him so much like Day I love you. I love you. Like really if you think about it he was really just caught up in like the whole mess. For me I'm a Day apologist and I totally understand the situation that he went through. I don't blame him. He can blame everybody else but not him. One of the things that I noticed his face looks better like in motion. I think he looked really good in like the movie posters and like pictures that I've seen from him online but really watching the series I was like wow this guy is really really handsome. I just gotta say that. His acting really did shine when he was with the actors that played his family rather than honestly the main cast. I think the chemistry between him and the actors that play the family were really really strong and honestly believable. Like I thought that was a dad. I thought it was a real sister. I would have totally believed it. Also amazing smile. Like gorgeous gorgeous smile. Every time he smiled I was like I need a smile too because that is a gorgeous gorgeous smile. So earlier I said that I don't think that Juliana and Kitty are going to be Endgame. I do think that Endgame is going to be Day and Kitty. They have like amazing on-screen chemistry. It's not anything compared to like Laura Jean and Peter. I don't think that it could be replicated that easily but I do think that like Kitty and Day are like a good second. Every time that they went through like hardships or like they went through obstacles together I felt that. I think that good chemistry between actors really make those scenes hit harder. I still favor good chemistry over anything. I think that they have it. I also wanted to mention like let us move on. Let us move on. <laughs> so cute. I'm obsessed with him and if they fuck up his character in season two or if they make him like super unlikable I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna be mad. Chuseok is approaching and we need to get ready for Friendsgiving. So let's head over to Seoul Central Market to buy ingredients for our famous mashed potatoes. All right, so the real name of this place isn't Seoul Central Market, it's actually called Hanado Mart. To be honest, I don't really have much to say about this place. I mean, it's kind of a typical grocery store that you would see in Korea, but this place was filled with people and very big in size. Everything was neatly organized and easy to find, super colorful. Like if you need to film at a grocery store, like this definitely is the one to pick and they did. Basically, almost every aisle had a store worker in front of it and they had like free samples for so much stuff. It was like Costco. People that talk to you into getting free samples is always like 50-50 for me because one side of it triggers my social anxiety because I'm like ew people randomly talking to me but also I'm not gonna miss up on free samples hello. But yeah I'm surprised my family hasn't stopped by this mart before. Definitely will be coming back because the prices were all pretty decent too. Now I just need a cute boy to bump into at this mart to help me shop. All right, so let's move on to Mino. I cannot believe that he just turned 27. Like that is so crazy to me. I'm so sorry, but Mino is like the perfect example of a character with pretty privilege. Everybody like loves him, but like if we get down to like the meat of it, he was so annoying. And the only reason why he got away with it was because he's pretty. That personality is not hot if you are not hot. That personality type is only hot if you are hot. I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I genuinely feel like Mino is the most queer coded character out of all of the characters in Exo Kitty. I don't know if Jenny Han was the one that wrote these characters, but I feel like she unintentionally made the most queer coded character straight, as so we believe. I honestly get more queer energy from him than like Lorian and Q that are like actually like gay characters in the show. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. Throughout the entire series, I keep trying to convince myself that his accent is real. I don't know why, but I guess my brain can't like process like Asians with like a British accent. For me, in my brain, like British accents like correlate to like white people, but like also like Alex with like the Australian accent. I was like, oh yeah, he has an Australian accent. But for some reason, Mino's British accent, the whole time I was like, that's not real, that's not real. His little like romance or like relationship with the Rice Queen literally made me cringe so bad. Like, am I being crazy about this? Like, was there any people that like genuinely like enjoy that relationship? Or was everybody just like, also hating it while watching it the same as I did. I feel like they did him so dirty with the like shitting in the bush like storyline. Was it really necessary for him to shit in the bush? I'm genuinely asking. Oh. 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 
<laughs> it's happening. Oh, I also want to point out that Amino's mom is a MILF. Welcome to the Outdoors Club's first hiking session. The sole hike in the series was filmed at Sojangde, which was initially a military command post established in the late 1700s and is located in Suwon. If you watched any of my other videos, you know that Korea has a surprising amount of walking and hiking trails all throughout the country, and this hike was no joke. It wasn't difficult, but for a non-hiker like me, yeah, I got a little winded. There were two ways of getting to the top, the traditional hiking way and the easy way that had a built-in staircase. I ultimately just used the staircase, but I did try some of the actual hiking path for fun. Also, I did not know what I was expecting, but I did not walk this with athletic wear. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just wear a fuzzy sweater and jeans. I'll be fine. The path walking up also had a lot of historical artifacts that you see all over while hiking. It was a very fun place to hike. Then we finally made it to the top and it was gorgeous up here. Oh my god. The hike was so hard on me though. Like when I reached the top, I wanted to take in all of the beauty, but because I was so tired, this was how I was. This was another one of those places I visited where I really felt like I was in a series since I came pretty early in the day and there weren't too many people up here. Then we have the view from up here. It was so amazing. Like, I legit stayed up here for so long because one, I was tired, of course, but two, because I just kept looking at the view. If you look closely, you'll see the hospital where Professor Alex was born. I'm just kidding. There was no hospital like that. I tried to look for it, could not see it. I definitely could not capture the full beauty of this view because I did not have like a crazy professional camera with amazing zoom or like a drone or whatever they used to film in the series, but it was just as beautiful in real life as it was in the series. Trust. Random thing too that I need to mention in the series, they strategically filmed it so you don't don't see the railing, so I don't know why I was so surprised when I saw the railing there. Like obviously there was gonna be a railing here for safety purposes, but because my brain didn't see it in the series, I thought it was just gonna be open. So now let's talk about Mr. President of the Outdoors Club. I gotta say when they first introduced Q, I was like, okay, typical gay best friend character, the GBF, nothing really new, nothing fresh. So I really was wondering how Anthony Kavon would portray this character again, because his character Q in Exo Kitty is basically just kind of like a watered down version of Raheem, his character in Love Victor. I was wondering how Anthony Kavon was going to separate his performance in Love Victor and his performance in Exo Kitty without it being like completely the same character. But I will say compared to Raheem and Love Victor, his character didn't feel fully fleshed out compared to like even the other characters in the show. In his opening like scene where they introduced him, Kitty like gave him like, a little intro. It was like fellow American, like heart of gold, track star. Wait, are you Q? Track star, fellow American, heart of gold? Guilty as charged. I feel like we should hug right now. Should we hug? They kind of just like cut his character after that. It's pretty much all this character was. Like I felt kind of bad. Like I said, we've seen him play this character already in Love, Victor. So I was kind of disappointed with his character just specifically because I know that he could do better. And I know it's not him as an actor's fault. It is just the script writers and the character development. I just didn't get what I needed to get. I usually am rooting for like the gay couples in the show, but Q and that French boy had like no chemistry. I don't know if it was just me. Every single scene that they had together, whether it was like affectionate or like going through like hardships in their relationship, I did not feel anything. It was like if they got together or if they didn't get together, it didn't really matter. For gay couples, I'm like very like sensitive towards it because it's like every little thing that they do, like even holding hands, I'm like, oh my God, I love this. But for some reason, just Q and the French boy, they just didn't do it for me. We're failing literature and Professor Lee has just told us that we need some academic help. So we got to head to the KISS library so we can meet our new tutor. The KISS library wasn't actually the school's library. The library scenes were all filmed at the National Library of Korea in Sejong. This library was absolutely massive and the shape of the library is actually supposed to resemble an open book. This place was actually very far from where the school scenes were filmed at. It was around a two hour express train right away. Like I was not expecting it to be that far, but honestly worth the ride because I love this library. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, going to this library, it looked very different from the series. I legit was like, am I at the right place? But this is where official Netflix told me it was filmed, so it must be it. I'm assuming that because this is a very popular library, they didn't want to shut down the library for filming, so they just shot the scenes in private staff-only rooms or something. It's either that or the library have changed their setup since Exo Kitty was filmed. But I was really looking forward to seeing the little like circle of books with the seat in the middle and also the place where the detention scenes were filmed, but I couldn't find it. I swear I searched the whole library twice and I couldn't find anything. But the whole library was still very gorgeous. They had two floors, with the first First floor having the main lobby and a little cafe, and the basement floor was for the kids section. The library atmosphere was amazing and just felt really good to be in. I would go here more often if it wasn't so far away. Like it's so far away, oh my god. So let's get into Yuri. Let the girl like girls in peace, oh my god. She was so threatened by Kitty and for like what? I feel like her action didn't really match the goals that she was trying to achieve in the series, if I'm being completely honest. Because how I see it is she was in the wrong for stealing Day from Kitty and she only is threatened by Kitty because 
Diddy can spill her secret. But the way that I would personally approach the situation is because I know that I'm in the wrong and I don't want the secret to be leaked out. I would be more empathetic and be nicer to Kitty so that she wouldn't have the need or the feel to spill my secret. But that's just how I would approach it. Yuri's dad is a total dilf. I'm sorry. I'm just saying what we're all thinking. There was one scene that like really touched me and it was specifically the one where she was in the bedroom with her mom. She said something along the lines of, I need to live a fake life for you to keep loving me. I have to live a fake life just so you'll keep on loving me. And I'm done doing that. That scene, that line, it broke me. Like, it was so powerful to me. I love that line. I'm looking forward to her and her storyline in season two because when I tell you that the representation that we have of queer Asian women in the media is so little, we need more of that. We officially made it to our last stop of the tour. Welcome to Incheon International Airport, the place where Kitty's story begins and ends in season one. Going to the airport alone to essentially just walk around and hang out and then go back home was a new experience for me, I'm not gonna lie. But I do love going to airports. I think it's because in my brain, it's kind of instilled in my mind that airports equal like, yay, fun, happy travel time. I don't know if it's just me, but I love going to airports around like midnight or like around like 2 a.m. Best feeling ever. I don't know why, but maybe that's just me. But anyway, ton of people at this airport, which was expected because I came like midday. Airports always spark like curiosity within me because I'm always wondering like, ooh, where are you going today? Or, oh my god, how long are you staying here? There was also a ton of stores and restaurants available. And this is gonna sound so lame, but let's talk about the iconic Incheon Airport bathrooms. If you've ever been to Incheon Airport, you know these bathrooms. All of these bathrooms in the airport have this like cunty white light up sign and they all look identical to each other. Like show me a picture of this bathroom and I'm immediately thinking of Incheon. These are the self check-in for the tickets. I know this has no relation, but in the series, the airline that Kitty uses to travel from Portland to South Korea was Asian Airlines and I found Asiana Airlines so I thought that was cute. I also found the Incheon help robot but it was still sleeping or recharging I guess. Honestly the vibes at the airport are kind of amazing like watch this be my new hangout spot. I feel bad because Incheon is probably the biggest place out of all of the filming locations that I visited but I've already been here like a good amount of times and it's just an airport so I don't really have much to say. But yeah if you're ever planning on going to Korea Incheon is the way to go and probably what you'll end up choosing. I want to talk about what I want to see in season 2 of Exo Kitty. I think that Kitty might make a dent in Yuri and Juliana's relationship, like maybe just a little bit, but like I said, I think that Yuri and Juliana's chemistry is way too strong to break. So I'm excited to see how that plays out, but also I'm just very excited to see Yuri and Juliana's relationship bloom in season two. This one might be super unlikely, but I want to see Mino's queer era. It probably isn't going to happen because a lot of the main characters in the series already are queer. And even if they did, like the whole main cast except for Day is going to be like queer. And that is so funny to me. Jenny Han is like, okay, let's cool it with the gay people, we have enough. I want to see Kitty have a girlfriend in season two that isn't Yuri because I want Kitty to experience queer love that isn't going to end bad because the girl that she likes is already in a relationship. Like even if it is just a short fling, I do want Kitty to like experience all of the feels and really like figure herself out when it comes to her sexuality until ultimately falling back in love with Day because like I said, I think that Kitty and Day are endgame and I love their chemistry together. This one is not really a want because I know that it's going to happen in the series. Kitty is going to feel mixed feelings about Juliana in season two until ultimately warming up to Juliana and Kitty and Juliana are going to be like best friends. And I want to see how that relationship plays out between them and Yuri. I want something good to happen today in season two. Like Jenny Han did him so dirty in this season. I just really want Day to be happy in season two. I really want a new boyfriend for Q in season two. I'm sorry, but Florian is just not cutting it for me. Like I really don't care that he like cheated on his finals or whatever. I just don't really see the chemistry between the two actors. I want to see Day's jealous era, there is something so hot about men getting jealous and worked up. I'm so sorry. Lastly, what I want to see in season two is me, Jenny Han, please cast me. This officially marks the end of our Exo Kitty tour. I'm so sorry, but you guys need to catch your flight back home. Not me though, I'm staying here. I had an amazing time watching Exo Kitty and seeing all of these places in real life, some that I've never been to before and some that I have. It was really magical to see after seeing it from the series. There is something so special to me about visiting movie sets, and I hope I can do this again for season two. Jenny Han, call me. I'm so sad that it's over. Like, I'm genuinely so bummed about it. I'm so curious though, if you could go to any place in Exo Kitty, where would it be? But I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you. Bye. Perfect match, ain't no